So a bit onto Terrain Tamer. They're sending a brand new lay shaft overnight, so it'll be arrived tomorrow. So we're just gonna get on and um, replace all the bearings in the other shafts, so uh, we're ready to put it back on, because that lay shaft's the first bit to go back in the box in the morning. So first bearing to go back on, loads of lube. The more the better, I say. So, Richard, you're waiting for the lay shaft. That hasn't showed up. Mm -hmm. What's this shaft? Well, this is the output shaft on the um, on the gearbox. But so we're just going to get this loaded up, um, all the gears back on it, all the bearings back on, um, ready to uh, get the, for the lay shaft in the morning. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, you can sort of. Are you mm -hmm. doing this just out of your brain, or are you looking at a manual? <laughs> no manuals, no manuals. It's all laid out on the on the bench for us exactly the way it came off. So. So. For those of you who have not seen the inside of a gearbox, just a quick layman's explanation of how a synchro works. So, you've got the old synchro ring over here. Not much wrong with it. Um, teeth are still good, still grabs, but comes in the kit, so we'll be changing it anyway. Nice new one, nice and clean. And if you just feel the operation, you put a bit of tension on that and it'll just start to grab. So the teeth grab on that concaved bit so when you put this on these are the detent so we've replaced all the detent springs and all the interlocks or detents make sure we get the right way around and um, they they all need to line up with the little cutouts in the synchro otherwise it will mesh and you'll have all sorts of problems so that's how that's just to show it operates, so that's all good. So put a circlet back on the end of that, push that right in, and then we can start on the other end. So this is basically first gear, and we've got second, third, and fourth. Just pop, uh, where's me bloody? Oh yeah. That's it. So that's your second gear synchro there. And then on the other side, so now that's that's not gonna go anywhere. We'll get our um, third and fourth synchro. Now we've cleaned this off. Um, the synchro's all right on this. We've checked them. Um, they'll go again. Otherwise, if you have, you'll see they're flat. There's no teeth left and you'll be crunching in gears. So if that's the case, you will need to replace this whole um, third and fourth gear synchro hub. And this also has the, the reverse gear in it as well. So, let me pop this back on. I just love lube. So we've got another bearing to replace, and that's the old one. Hey, Richard, you obviously love lube. But what sort of lube is that? Oh, so we're using uh, the stuff we normally use in the box of the Penrite 8090, just to, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, it's just more, the more the more the merrier. So get as yeah. much on there as possible. And you're not too fussed about using some sort of fancy applicator either, I noticed. No, not at all. Look, this is, look, if you're doing it at home, you can use a bottle, just drill a small hole in the top of the lid, and um, just use it as a squirt, and I find it really, uh, really works well. So the whole idea is you just soak it in the oil mm. it's going to be soaking in eventually. That's it. Bit tight on there. This one it was tight to come off. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. 
Now that's done, that's ready to go back inside the gearbox. And now we're going to move on to the, um, the first motion shaft, replace the bearing, uh, replace the synchro that's going to go in there. So, and there's a really cool um, little bit that I'll show you with the needle rollers that go inside the first motion shaft. You will use grease just to pack them all around so they don't move and then you know that they go in. However, well, they can be a bit of an issue. These are them here. So just changing the bearing on the uh, first, first motion shaft, press the old one off. That was a still Japanese, but NS, NSK bearing. We've got Koyo bearings going back on. These are input shaft bearings are now sealed on these. So we'll press this back on and get the synchro ready. We won't be putting the needle roller pins back in until we come to actually put the shaft back in the gearbox. So um, I'll show you that a bit later. So we're just waiting for the lay shaft to arrive on the first morning courier. Now, before we do that, we've had the casing um, cleaned and painted. We're gonna be putting the reverse idler in there, um, getting all that in place, ready for the lay shaft to be dropped in. It should be at any minute now. So um, we've got the other shaft. So this is the output shaft all ready to go, all new bearings. We've got the new bearing on the, the first motion shaft. We've got the rollers to do in here when it all goes together, but we'll, um, it all has to go back in a sequence the same way that it was taken apart. So uh, let's crack on with this first. So. so you don't use like an assembly grease or something? No, no, because we know this box is going straight in the vehicle, it's going to get used straight away. We don't need to use assembly grease. That's only if you, um, it's going to sit on the bench for a long time. Okay, and uh, you never leave things sitting on the bench, mate. Let's go. Not around here. Oh boy, this is looking complicated, Rich. What's that? Which shaft's that? Well, this is the first part of the puzzle, really, when we're going back together. So this is the reverse idler, um, and that needs to go in loads of lube. And this, the keyway is very critical here to get it right at the right point, because and then we're knocking it in with a nylon hammer um, to get it all the way back. It, it does need a bit of bashing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but with a nylon hammer. Oh, very important. Oh yeah, that's got to be. I mean, you know. Into that with a real hammer, you're going to do some damage. <laughs> Big time. So I'm just going to knock this seal out of the transfer case and then we'll match it up with the new one. And just remember which way it come out. So you, so you just knock that uh, old seal out, no worries? Yeah, knock the old seal out, no worries. Um, really important to know which way around the seal goes back, but... Just going over the Terrain Tamer kit here, I just love the amount of stuff that's in this kit. It's just beautiful, really. <laughs> so you've pretty, you've got everything you need and some options, really. Everything and some options. That's why you've got to be very careful to get the right seal for the job, really. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I can see you being careful there for a yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> especially here with the nylon hammer. Definitely being careful there, knocking the new, new uh, seal in. Certainly not something you do with a screwdriver. No, definitely not. Good on you, mate. Now I'm going to remove this bearing out of here. It's got some, uh, it's quite noisy actually, so we're going to pop this out. Oh, is that, is that the, what's that? Is that the little C clip or something? Yeah, get this, get the little C clip out before we knock it out from the other side and uh, replace it with a new, new bearing. Oh, okay, so um, that's the bearing in there. Yeah, we'll just get it, use a drift. Probably should be using a longer drift than I'm using, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, you're playing it fairly close to the case there. Definitely, you? mate. A uh, few scars on my knuckles from previous attempts. <laughs> yes, well, at least you know what you're doing, mate. But this, they... this, so this is going to wind up with the... The kit came with all the bits for the transfer case too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, the kit's pretty extensive all the way through to every single seal that you'd ever need for both gearbox and transfer. Is that right? Mm. Wow. So you mean that dirty old 60s is going to be like new after this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taking a Taiwanese bearing out, putting a Koyo bearing in. So, mate, you've ripped out a Taiwanese bearing. Yep. And what are you putting in? A Koyo, Koyo, Japanese made, mate. It's the only way to go as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, you hear that all the time, don't you? I mean, yeah. I, I know with Terrain Tamer, all their stuff is sourced from Japan. Yeah, no, no, it's great. It's the only way to go for us. We, 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 we won't do anything else. You don't need to flog these. They're going quite easy because they're retained by a clip. So, 
what are you are you using the old Taiwanese bearing as a, a bit of a drift? That's a bit of a drift. So it's, <laughs> it's the, the perfect size and it will spread the weight. So use that, knock the bearing in, and um, and you, you will have to finish it off a little bit with a wide drift, just the last couple of millimeters. Yeah. Yeah, and try not to hit your hand too often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did this recently, you know, um, with a set of new wheel bearings, and because it was for the back axle, and there was a it was a little bit tight. I actually cut a, a gap yep, in the old it. bearing. It eh? works really well actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, a little groove in it just so it fits over the bearing and you're not sliding off it all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly, and, and that way I didn't hammer two bearings in, I could pop it back out. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. So we're just popping the C-clip back in here now, um, just using the screwdriver just to get it down all the way, make sure it pops back into the groove. Go on, ready to go. That can go back to where it was, waiting to be fitted when we come to the transfer case. Well, so here we go, overnight from Terrain Tamer, brand new lay shaft. Got the old one here as a comparison. See the damage there on the, on the bearing race. And uh, yeah, we're gonna pop this one in now and we can start assembling. This is what we've been waiting for, so everything can start happening now. There's the important bit, look. Made in Japan, no reproduction parts. These are sourced from Japan, from probably the people that built them in the first place for Toyota, so all good stuff here. So output shaft next. Right, so there's not a lot of space for this, this, uh, this output shaft to get in there. It's, it's quite a tricky beast to get back in, but just uh, watch your fingers and you'll be all right. Oh yeah, so it's just a jiggle, isn't it? I mean, so many things are like that, aren't they, in gearboxes? Oh yeah, definitely, they, they design them so there's not much space to work around it. Lovely. Now we can show you the trick with the needle bearings. So we've got a new, new synchro for that. Pop these in with assembly grease. Now that just holds them in place so they stick to the side so we're not gonna lose any as we slide it in there. So, oh yeah, what, you're using grease there to I'm pack actually, the needles? I'm actually using assembly grease. Uh, so yeah, just pack it in there as much as possible. We pack the needles in there. Now next one's this end. To get this first motion shaft and the output shaft in place nice and then we move on to the the lay shaft and it actually lifts up in place and then the bearings go in and it's all in there ready to reassemble so once you've got this bit out of the way we're cruising all right so those bearings are all home we're just gonna lube up just so it's all in there for when it first starts moving so all is nice so we'll attempt to get the uh well attempt we'll get the uh the bearings in the lay shaft now lift it up in place okay so what's that? Oh, that's the bottom bearing on the... Yeah, the bottom bearing on the front of the gearbox. Now, there's a... It, that goes on a... On, that's, the race is actually part of the lay shaft. So you see the ah. you see the bearings, they're open. There's no... There's yes, no, yeah, righto. Yeah. So there, it's like an open needle roller? That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that should just pull up. It's quite awkward to get the, the gears all meshed to get it up and, 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 and pop that in, so yeah. Okay, yeah, righto. So when it's awkward, you just get a bigger hammer or...? Oh, a <laughs> nylon, a bigger nylon hammer, let's say. Yeah, uh, yeah. And who's that giving you a hand in the background? That's but... Mick. He's, um, he's a gearbox specialist by trade, so um, he's very handy to have around. Oh, right. Oh, you really need him watching you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like you haven't done enough of these That's things in the past <laughs> yourself, mate. <laughs> okay, so essentially you had to hold the shaft up to get the bearings in, right? That's right, yep. And obviously, once again, heaps of oil on everything. Oh, loads of it, loads of it. Yeah, okay. Can't, can't, can't say it enough, really. Like, Oh, there's Mick. And this is the back bearing, the big yep. back bearing. This is the big back bearing that goes in. This is, it's, um, this is really quite an integral part of the build because you're making sure that the gears are up. And you, if you have any of these gears touching and you hit the wrong part, you'll knock a tooth off or something Ooh. like that. You do not want to do that at this stage. Yeah, so it's yeah. good to have two eyes looking at it front and back. So Yes, exactly. Two eyes, one set with glasses. Yeah, yeah. And That's it. <laughs> at the end of the day, meshing those two shafts together in the box mm -hmm. is what it's all about. So you're checking that constantly. Constantly, all the yeah. time, making, that, making sure that nothing's fouling on each other, that there's a nice smooth operation of everything. Yeah. And you can see the top shaft moving now too. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It will Beautiful. do now. Beautiful. So just knock, knock that little race in there. It, yep. We might look like we're being a bit brutal with it, but um, honestly, this is uh, one of the only ways to do it. So especially at home.
Well, and also given, you know, for anyone who doesn't understand the strength of a Toyota gearbox. Oh, definitely. I mean, look at that. You're not talking tiny little components, are no, you? No, you're no, not, no. Some, you're not talking some front wheel drive little <laughs> car exactly. or something. Yeah, no, no. These are, these are great boxes, and when, um, when they... I mean, when more. this goes together, it will just be a fantastic gearbox to drive soon. Well, to be honest, I've driven it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know how good it is. Yeah. It works really well. Um, and it's worth the effort. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, definitely. But essentially, this box must have been a part once before in its past right. life. I mean, It must have done. It must have done. But um, the, 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 the wear on it was actually quite... Uh, telling really to its life. I think it's had a, a bit of a brutal life, especially with Simon owning well, it. Well, Simon owned it and he did over 600,000 Ks. That's right, yeah. um, and everybody's seen him jumping up and down those rock wedges <laughs> in the Northern Territory, you know. Mm. I mean, he bounced this thing all over the mm. place. So, here, what we're doing, we're just making sure that we've that knocked the, the lay shaft through enough. You'll see Mick with the little circlip there, through enough so the circlip will actually go over and go home. Yeah. So, we're just going to make sure it's in there now. Mick will just make sure with the, the, the drift that it's just home and it's never going to come off. You know what? Like For people like us who like to keep their trucks forever, there's something to be yeah. said for using really good quality oil. I know since Simon bought this truck, the last 300,000 Ks, He's been using nothing but Penrite oil, mm -hmm. and that was there was damage on the shafts. You could see damage, but I mean, considering it had really second-rate Taiwanese bearings and yeah. third-rate Simon jumping it nice. through the air, that's pretty good. Very good indeed. If he used any other oil, I reckon that um, there'd be a lot more damage in there. All right, might as well replace that, replace that seal, and we'll pop this home so that doesn't move anymore. Yeah, because that's the, re the bearing retainer. On it. So once you've got it all together and your bearings, you're happy with your bearings, just make sure that your, your gears are engaging the way they should do. So yeah, all happy. We're ready to move to the next stage. Always put, pop a little bit of grease on the gasket surface. More than anything else, just helps with the sealing process and it holds it in place. So it won't fall around on you. So, Pull down there, again on the other surface, just a little bit, you don't have to go mad. Not Blue Peter. Oh, nearly forgot, eh? I know Mick's put a little bit of grease around there already, but just on the, on the ceiling surface of the shaft, so. Lovely. And bolts for that. I'll mix kindly, clean them for me already. It was really good if you, um, when you're doing a box, get a nice big petrol bath so you can soak all the nuts and bolts in it and clean them up nicely. Just make sure it's in a well ventilated area, eh? Otherwise, you turn it like Mick. What, so you're sort of saying mix a little on the burnt side there, mate? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. He's, he's probably got more in there than I have, to be honest. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, in terms of experience? Yes, just a little bit, mate. Oh, that's just because he's old, mate. Yeah, Don't get up. Really. Us old blokes, you know, we, we know a mm -hmm. thing or two. When I'm, take, when I'm taking apart, you can rattle, you can do whatever, but I always, when I'm going back together, I always use hand tools. And then obviously torque the bolts up to their correct setting. Right, so we've got fifth gear on now and the fifth gear selector. Now don't be shy because this, uh, the fifth gear synchro unit here is tight going onto the spline. So you, you know, you'll have to give it a bit more than you expect. So, um, and then torque the bolt up, make sure you nail both sides over because you're not gonna go in here again. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get the fifth gear casing on, your brand new gasket. Once that goes on, we can start attacking the transfer case. So, yeah, we're getting on now. Um, yeah, looking forward to getting it back in there this afternoon, hopefully, fingers crossed. So we just put the fifth gear housing on. You will need to lift up the fifth gear selector to get over the selector fork itself. That bung's on, goes on the dowels. Now, you don't put any bolts in at this stage. You wait until the, f the front part of the transfer case goes on. So another gasket and then the front transfer case and bolt right through. So. Uh, you got that case in, Mick? 
We just need a gasket, get some grease on there. Now we've cleaned up these surfaces nice and clean. So um, you can, if you're, if you're worried about it leaking, you can use a tiny bit of um, sealer, make sure it's transmission one. But we're all right, this is the way they did it from factory. A bit of grease helps with the sealing. And when you bolt it together, you can just clean off the excess grease that squeezes out. You shouldn't have a problem with this in the future. Now, before we put the transfer case on, don't forget this little plastic. This is the oil feeder back into the lay shaft. So it collects the oil and it slowly drips back in there. Just clips in there, hunky dory. Oh yeah, that's the bit you find when you're finished, isn't it? That little plastic bit and go, oh dear. Yes, and I have done it. <laughs> that oh, that comes you? from experience, <laughs> mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, um, You've always got to count the bits that are left yeah, over, haven't you? Mate, definitely. <laughs> and count your tools when you put them back. That's right. <laughs> so we're just putting the, the big main bolts through um, through to the gearbox now. So this is your the front transfer case housing. Um, and once we've got this torqued up, um, yeah. you know, FT and all that, and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll start getting the transfer gears back in. Now remember, this is where all the wear was in the transfer case. So in the process of reassembling the transfer case, and this is the brand new transfer idler shaft that gets supplied in the terrain tamer kit. Um, and then this is where all the damage was on, the, on the, um, the thrust washers. So we've got brand new thrust washers, brand new needle uh, rollers to go in here. And we're just putting the, the actual low range and four wheel drive um, selectors and that in now. Um, so yeah, not long now before we're gonna be putting the casing on putting a few ancillaries on and get it back in the vehicle. Can't wait. So we're just gonna put the first of the frost washers in. Now you can see what they're supposed to be like. That surface is supposed to be completely flat. Now they've obviously superseded this part because they've given you more of a surface area that it runs on now. On the old one you can see where it's worn a groove over the years. Um, and you can see the wear on the brass itself. So they're, they're, um, they're cactus and we'll be putting the new ones on. Looks like there's a bit of a keyway there or something, mate. Yeah, really important to get this right because um, otherwise you'll crush the keyway and they'll just start spinning in there and, and you'll get um, premature failure of this this, bit, this thrust washer. Uh, yeah, because at the end of the day, a thrust washer is just a spacer, isn't it? Yeah, hold, yeah, it hold is. the cogs in the right place. To hold the cogs in the wall, in this case, the, the needle rollers that are inside the, 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 yeah. the transfer gear. Okay, so if they can move, they can wear too fast, that just changes all the... Yep. There's a lot of pressure on these thrust washers, actually. You, you, you can see that the way the old washers have, have worn out over the years. So. Is that because it's a helical gear? That, exactly. Make sure you remember the spacer between the, new, the two bearings. I missed that, mate. What did you do there? Um, we're just putting the spacers in there. This, this is a spacer that spaces out the, the, the two transfer gears. Make sure the bearings are uh, right in the centre of them. Okay, yeah. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense. The, the bearings have to sit inside the gears. That's correct, yeah. And the... Oh, what's that? So this is the idler gear, which transfers the output shaft drive down to the actual um, the forward and rear uh, drive shafts through right. the transfer case. Oh, okay. So basically, it's got the two different size helical gears on it because you select one or the other for low or high range. Low, that that's right? it. That's perfect. This will just feed up that, that bearing, so when we get first motion, we, get, we know we're lubricating. Beautiful. One thing you do need to do, is make sure that this sits in the groove in the outer transfer case. So we'll do that when we come to it anyway. I'll just leave that on there so we know that's all good. Well, 
that shaft you're lubing up, that's the input output shaft, is it? Yeah, the, um, so th this is where your front and rear tail shafts are joined to there. Plus you've got your speedo drive on the outside of the casing. So all these gears go in first before we put the outer casing on. Ah, well, of course. <clears throat> Otherwise yeah. you wouldn't be able to get them in there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but, you know, the beauty thing for people who don't understand what they're doing when they pull the little stick is now you can see exactly what you're doing. That's right. You're shifting from one set of those gears to the other. That's it. You got So you've got four-wheel drive in there and then low range as well. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Fairly... Crucial components there, mate. That Just give it a little bit of grease on that seal ceiling surface. So that's the shaft that's run all the way through from the back of the motor. What's it called there now at the back? So it's the, it's the bit... The gearbox output shaft comes right through. The, bear, the gear I'm putting on at the moment is just... Always make sure you use a plastic hammer, rubber hammer or something. Just to... Um, that puts the drive through to your, to your transfer gears. Yes. And then after this, there's a little spacer and then the, the last gear to go on is your PTO gear. Oh, your PTO gear so yeah. that you can run your snow plough. The snow plough, yeah. <laughs> Mostly PTO um, winches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we've got all the transfer gears in place, we've got the selector forks in, we've checked all the operation of all the gears, all the four-wheel drive, the low range, we've got your PTO um, gear there, new bearings everywhere. Now this is, the, um, this is the offending item, so that goes in a lock and that, that's the thrust washer, so that stops the movement of this gear. There must have been about three or four mil movement there as you came on and off the power, so that's all sorted. We're going to get some rubber grease on here, get the gasket on, get the casing on, and then all we've got is the flanges, and then the, um, the four-wheel drive selector, the spaceship. So uh, yeah, cracking on. Right, so we're all back, back together. We've got the throw-out bearing back on. We've, um, we've checked the operation of the, the low range, the four-wheel drive selector. We've had the gear stick in. We've gone through all the gears, made sure that everything turns perfectly. Now this kit from Terrain Tamer is so comprehensive, even down to every little um, O-ring, little seal, the speedo seals. Um, it's all there. We're only left with two bits in the kit, and this is because these two, this gator here and this seal, are for the, the non-vacuum um, four-wheel drive selector. So we'll keep them on the shelf for later, just in case we need them for another job. But they're not needed, so don't worry that you've got a couple of bits left over. So the only thing left to do now is get it on the engine stand, get it back up in there. Oh, wham bam, indeed. Well, you just cleaning up there? Yeah, cleaning up a few. Um, uh, oil residue that, that could be left over from anything, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. And that's the clutch, obviously, clutch pressure plate going in. That's it, and Terrain Tamer also give you the little tool that goes in there, you know, that's... Oh, the, the locating that's tool. That's it. So there we go. We're going to get it back in. We've used the, um, the Terrain Tamer little uh, first motion shaft dummy, basically, for the clutch, the centre of the clutch plate. So, um, famous last words, it should just slide in, eh? Oh, yeah, slide right in, you reckon? Yeah, only <laughs> if they did every time, mate. You know? Oh, mate, look, I spent about two hours with my Holden gearbox the other day trying oh, to do exactly this. Some of them are better than others. Um, it depends how you can see we're using the wood to try and get, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, like, um, the, the exactly pitch of right. it exactly right, yeah, yeah. but it, it never, you can never get it perfect. So uh, no. I remember this one was a bit of a struggle, to be honest, <laughs> in the end. <laughs> but, I mean, a lot of that... You're turning the shaft, you've got to keep that. Yep. You're just trying to get the spline right on the clutch. Because they're quite coarse yeah. splines, or well, they are coarse splines. Yeah. So you can be a half a tooth out and it can give you a right nightmare. But the important thing here for other people, especially if they're doing it on the back in the gravel, mm. is that you can't let that hang off. No. You can't let the gearbox hang off the first motion shaft. No, shot. definitely not. Don't Co do that. Causes all sorts of damage, not to mention bending up the clutch plate if, if you've got that That's little it, bit yeah. in So what, what we're using here, we're not at all using the bolts to pull it in. We're okay. using them as guides. So we, yeah. get them, we get them just there, and then we use the, use the bolts as guides to try and get it through the spigot bearing, through the clutch plate. So they're, they're more like dowels in this Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely, yeah. At no stage should you use the bolts to uh, force them in no, there. No, if that gearbox doesn't fall on like that one mm, just did, yep. you're in trouble. Definitely. <laughs> right, so nearly the moment of truth. So we've just got the bash plate to put on. We've put some beautiful Penrite 8090 in the uh, gearbox and transfer case. Greased all the tail shafts. All ready to go, man. I can't think of many more things to do. Obviously, upstairs we've got the, um, the gear stick and the four wheel, uh, the low range um, stick to go in and the gaiters to be bolted down. And that's about it, we're gonna go for a little burl in it. 
Right, so all done, oiled up, bash plates back on, gear stick back on. We're ready to go. Let's take it for a drive, see how she goes. Do love a 12 HT. Oh, mate, she's quiet as a mouse. I love it. There's a lot, of, a lot of noise coming out of this gearbox before, especially on the overrun. So in third gear, fourth gear, you let off, you'd hear a big whine coming from right underneath your ass. Oh, this is really impressive, isn't it? Oh, it blows me away, mate. Um, there you go. Before, when you drove this thing, it was so loose in the shift. Now it's nice and tight, and there's no noise at all. So it's just like a new gearbox, only better really, because it's got better components, and it's been rebuilt properly. Um, now when Cy bought this car, it had 300 odd thousand Ks on the clock, and he drove it home from South Australia, and it had a bit of a noise in it then. So it took, 350 odd thousand k's for that noise to escalate to the stage where something really had to be done about it. That had a lot to do with uh, regular oil changes and using Penrite oil obviously. Um, but at the end of the day, a handful of new parts has just sorted this like you wouldn't believe. You know, new parts, good parts and a good mechanic and wow, the whole vehicle is transformed because the gearbox and the transfer, which really are the most crucial parts of a vehicle after the motor, are virtually better than you. Wow, I can't believe the difference. I don't know, mate, I reckon you got another million Ks in this, wouldn't you reckon? Oh, bring on the million, mate, bring it on. <laughs> Places to go, people to see. Keep an old truck alive. Beautiful.